Once again, on behalf of God's servant, our state pastor, you are welcome to this vengeance service. You will return with your own blessing. In Jesus' mighty name. And this morning, this second service, is a privilege to stand in for God's servants, to bring God's word unto us this morning. I pray that God's grace behind his ministry in this assembly will back this word for our blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Wisdom from above and thrones is our theme of the month of June. Wisdom from above and thrones. And our teaching series for the month, we began in the first service, is unveiling the reality of the wisdom from above. Unveiling the reality of the wisdom from above. This is part 1b. Our anchor scripture is James chapter 3 and verse 15. James chapter 3 and verse 15. The Bible says, But this wisdom descended not from above. Talking about the other kinds of wisdom we have. Verse 15. He said, but it's earthly. That is the f um, number one type of wisdom we have. Earthly wisdom. Natural wisdom. Then number two is the sensual wisdom. That talks about the intellectual wisdom. The wisdom we go to school to acquire. It's different from the first one. The first one we are born with it is a follow come wisdom. Put that scripture back. The wisdom that a baby carries from the womb that knows where the breast is without training. That makes a baby to know that you suck with the mouth, not with the nose. That's wisdom. But nobody taught her or taught the child. The child won't want to poop now and open mouth. They say, What do you want to say? I want we. No. But nobody taught any child. He just follow come from heaven. That's earthly. But the sensual is the one we acquire. That's intellectual wisdom. Then number three is devilish, diabolical wisdom. The one people go to get from the devil. All this wisdom put together cannot compare in value to the one we are talking this morning. The next verse. Now jump to verse 17. He said, but the wisdom that is from above, from heaven. The other ones are not from, from above. They are not divine. They are human. He said, it's first pure and peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Divine wisdom. The wisdom from above. So, what is this divine wisdom? What is divine wisdom? In the first service, we said divine wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it in order to get your desired results. We said that divine wisdom is applying knowledge of the truth, not just acquire. Acquire knowledge is one. Apply knowledge is another. Acquire knowledge is what to know. <laughs> and what to know does not make it's what to do with what to know that pursue results out of your life. What is wisdom in addition? Divine wisdom is the application of the bitter truth of the word of God in order, in order to produce a better life. Applying the bitter truth of the word of God in order for you to produce a better life. Most of the drugs we take, they are not sweet. Am I right? Most of them are not sweet. But <laughs> when they enter, when the drug enter inside, it begins to work. Most of the instruction of scripture might not be palatable. It's not suitable to the flesh. That's the truth. It's not suitable. But if we can take it raw, it produces a better life. For instance, it's not easy. To the flesh, to give 10% when you are even believing God for more. They say your salary is not enough. God said, now bring 10% out of the one not enough. It's bitter to the flesh. But 
if you are able to obey, to apply that bitter truth, is a matter of time, it's going to make your financial life better. And I see someone's life becoming better as you apply the truth of God's word this month in the name of Jesus Christ. John 2 verse 5, whatsoever it tells you to do, do it. What is divine wisdom? It is the supernatural ability to bring solutions to issues that are too difficult to the human mind. Supernatural ability, divine ability to bring solutions to issues that are too difficult for human mind. Too difficult for intellectual wisdom. That is divine wisdom because the source of divine wisdom is God via his spirit. When you come to that junction, inspiration will just come. You never read it, you never heard it, but it came direct by divine inspiration. And solution, just land, pam. We read the story of one of our engineers in Lagos Church that was with, I think, the NNPC or so. The Kaduna refinery was having a problem. It's a testimony we have heard over and over again. And they invited all the expatriates and none of them could prefer solution. Well, they said to this man, we have sent you on trainees. You are moving down to Kaduna now. By all means, there must be solution to that engine. If not, you are fired. Uh -uh. Even the Oyibo that taught me, they couldn't do it. Is it me? Well, the man was confused. He just believed God. Praying in tongues, believing the help of God. Because what he learned in school can't help him. Now listen to me. A time will come in life that your skill may disappoint you. A time will come that expertise Qualification will disappoint. What to know will disappoint. At that point, the only way out is connection with divine wisdom. This brother got to Kaduna, he was confused. They opened the board and saw a manner of connection that you have not even seen before as an engineer. You know, there are engineers by handout, and there are engineers by practical. You know what I'm talking about. It's just that in this part of the, of the world, we celebrate certificate more than knowledge. There are engineers that never went to university. Some of them are in Nepal. The one that went to university doesn't know negative. He can't do it, but he knows it by paper. You know, negative, yellow, blue, put it together, it gives you output of 35 megawatts all over, three square per, all manner of grammar. But climb the ladder and produce the megawatt, he can't do it. But this other guy, practically, he knows it. But no grammar. He can do it, but they won't employ him. Or if they employ, they say, you stay here. You don't know paper. You, you are the ogre. So this guy opened the thing. He was confused. <laughs> he began to pray. Oh God, help me. Help me. He said, an inspiration just came. Lose this one. Just like turn error. But this one is not an error. He just got an expression. Lose this one and put this one and press this button. And as the expression was coming, he was just doing it. And that's he said, let them try the engine. And out of fear, he said, may not try and force. <laughs> you know, there are things you can't remove. He said, may not try and force. And as they tried, lo and behold, the engine worked. The man became a celebrity. The man humiliates the whites. Listen to me. The wisdom from above has nothing to do with color. Not. It's from above. Above the whites. What God is doing in this commission, you can't find it even in the white nations. Men, they are coming to see. They are traveling to Canaan land to see what? I've never seen this kind of thing before. You can't see it before. You can't. It's not by color. It's by the source. I see God connecting you with that kind of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Solution. <laughs> One day, why the construction of 
The first tabernacle was on. They needed to push in a very big tractor to fix some things while the roofing was on. They were struggling. How do we do? We can't go because the columns and the pillars have already been erected. They were struggling. All the engineers with their degree, MMM, NNN, NCS, corporate engineer, engineer of Nigeria, also society, all manner. You know, there are people who have long appellation on their Disney, MMM, NNN, CSC, JJJ, DDD. <laughs> with all the degree, they were struggling with their ailment or their head and their goggle and jeans and boots. They take good them. God's servant just walked to see what they are doing. Oh, Fox, what is happening there? Says, sir, in fact, we need to put this thing and this thing could enter. Leko shakata labradose keto librada yagada bashanda labaraba. I said, okay. And his friend just came. You don't need to struggle. Just deflate the tire. Reduce the, the, the hair inside the tire. The size will, will reduce. Push it inside. And re increase the, the tire again. And do your work. The eyes just open. They say, ah. <laughs> the man talking to them is not an engineer, but he has a source that is superior to the wisdom of engineering. That is what we are talking about divine wisdom. I see God imparting you with that kind of wisdom in the name of Jesus. That is the kind of wisdom Solomon operated in. In 1st Kings chapter 20, 20, 26, 1st King chapter. 3, sorry, verse 16 to 28. They, you know that story? Two, two women that, that slept, uh, they woke up, one of the child dead, one alive, and they were struggling. You know, remember the story? They took it to Solomon. One said, yeah, he's my child. He's not my child. Solomon too was connecting with the source. Oh God, what do I do? Okay, how do I know who is the owner? And you know at times, the fake people, they are loudest. The fake the fake say, nah, nah, say, hey, 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 the empty barrel make the louder noise. As King Solomon was meditating, inspiration came. Now, call one of the guard, get me a sword, sharp one. Collect that child. Since both of you are struggling, Okukuku divide it half half. One leg, one hair, one nose, one shade it into two. The other one say, yes, 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 kill him. No, the other one, you know, a woman, woman, you know what I'm talking about. There is this feeling. He said, no, 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 no. King, give it to her. I know one day, one day, blood will trace blood. The child will know the mother. Solomon said, yes, yes, truly, you are the owner of the child. Give it to her. And I believe that woman was punished. In fact, they should imprison her. That is divine wisdom that makes you not to come to a stage in your life where you don't know what to do. You might not know what to do by your qualification. You might not know what to do by your training. You might not know what to do by your skill or your experience. But with the wisdom from above, you can't get to a time where you won't know what to do. Our God is not a wise God. No, our God is wisdom personified. Saying God is a wise God is understatement. No. God is not a wise God. He is wisdom himself. And when you encounter him, you can't come to a level or a time in your life where you won't know what to do. And I pray for you, as you connect with this wisdom this month, may you never come to a crossroad in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me hear your louder. Amen. for us to know that this wisdom is a raw gift of God to his children. It's a gift. It's a gift. Proverbs 13 and verse 22 is a gift. Proverbs 13 22. You are entitled to it. I'm entitled to it. The Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. It's a gift. Jude 25. It's a gift from God to you and I. Jude 25. The Bible says, To the only wise God, 
only wise God, our Savior, is the custodian of wisdom. So if we are his children, it is part of the inheritance we are entitled to. By redemption, we are all entitled to divine wisdom. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout a better hallelujah. And we saw examples in scriptures. There are three Hebrew boys and their friend Daniel. The Bible says they were found to be ten times better than their colleagues. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. They were ten times better than their colleagues. And for these four children, that's Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, God gave them knowledge. God gave. That is a gift. God gave them and skill in all learnings and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dream. Now jump to verse 20. Verse 20. And in all manner, matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them how many times? Ten times better than all the magicians, astrologers that were in all his realm. Ten times better. This month, as you connect diligently with this wisdom, in your office, in that place you work, you shall be found ten times better. In the name of Jesus Christ. God's servant is not a professor, but he's a chancellor today. Professors working under him. He said he single-handedly wrote the curriculum with which Covenant University and Landmark University are working with today. Single-handedly. So it's not by your qualification. It's by access to the divine wisdom. Gone are the days where the only, your only, only hope is your paper, is your degree. You know what? There is no degree you have that there is no one ahead of you. Huh? There is no. If you like, have all the degree to 360 degree, there will always be somebody ahead of you. But when you connect with this wisdom, it's above every other individual. You operate in the realm of God. You operate in the class of God. You, you have access to the mind, to the God kind of thinking. One time, the NUC demanded that, you know, why the, um, the process of accreditation was going on, that um, a writer should be submitted from CU. And after the professors have sat down, they have written it, because I said, let me see before you, before you, you submit it. These are heavy professors. You know when you see professor, you know them by their years of a silhouette with their goggle. It's not this kind of small, small goggle. Every goggle. Because you have been using that goggle for 25 years. Experience. With gray hair. <laughs> when God servant read it, he told them, he said, this thing does not carry weight. There is no substance inside. He said, give me a few minutes. Just give me a few days. I go through it. Now he sat down and reconstruct what professors and when they dash you, professor, they mean that you, you are Mr. Know All. Are you aware? That's another local name for professor. Mr. Know All. You are the book, book, book. You are book yourself. <laughs> but someone that had access to divine wisdom, he said, no, 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 no. This one carry no weight. He sat down and retracted it by divine inspiration. And today, Covenant University still remains the number one. Number one, number one, university in Nigeria, under 15 years, by divine wisdom. That business can be better than it is now, if you connect it with the wisdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Solomon had wisdom. We know, we know the story of Solomon. God gave him wisdom, wisdom above all, all being that ever lived. First King 4, 29 to 30. Paul had access to the wisdom of God. 2 Peter 3, 15. Joseph provides solution to the problem of Egypt by divine wisdom. By divine wisdom, he never went to school. Oh, what do we do? He interpreted the dream and gave the solution. Ah, he said, with this kind of wisdom, who, who do we want again? <laughs> Can I tell you something? What the wisdom of God does, it paves way, even where there is no way. There was no 
no office of the prime minister until Joseph came. When they see the kind of wisdom you are operating in, you become inevitable. There are people they can easily sack. There are people, their employers are begging them, please, don't go. Somebody went to tender his resignation letter. The employer was begging. Please, why are you going? Is it our pay? Okay, we increase it. He said, no. No, I just want to go. Please, don't go. The difference is not qualification. If you say you have PAD, there are people that have PAD, capital P, capital H, capital D, better than you. So, but, there is a way you can operate that when they size you and weigh you with your colleagues, you are far better. Genesis 41, 15 and 16. Now, the virtue of wisdom, the virtue of wisdom, the first half you said it commands sources. That too, it guarantees wealth. And um, it provokes divine promotion. In addition, in this service, divine wisdom guarantees long life. Guarantees what? Long life. Proverbs 3 verse 16. It guarantees long life. Proverbs 3 verse 16. It's a length of days. Is in a right end talking about wisdom. Length of days. It's not only prayer one need to live long, it is wisdom. And what is wisdom? Application of the word. For instance, the Bible says, Thou shalt honor your father and what? And your mother, that your days may be long upon the earth. Now, applying that honor to your parent, that is wisdom. Because he that heareth and doeth is wise. You apply that, you already enlist yourself into long life. So that means, if you are foolish and you are, you are abusing your parents and you are praying for long life, let them lay hand and lay leg on you. You already violated the rule. No one year will die young in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, it guarantees peace. Peace. In that um, James 3 verse 17, he said, this wisdom from above is, is peaceful. It's peaceable. It guarantees peace. Proverbs 3 and verse 17. Proverbs 3 17. Let's read that. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible is talking about wisdom. Our ways are ways of pleasantness. And all our paths are what? Peace. 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 God someone said, there is no crisis for me to manage in this commission. You know why? Divine wisdom. Knowing what to do and doing it. Knowing when to go and go in there. Know what to say and saying it. That is wisdom. Wisdom will control your mouth. Wisdom will control your dressing. Wisdom will control your leg. We tell we control your bum bum where not to sit. We control everything about you. As mommy in the house, wisdom to tell you where not to say anything. Are you getting that? Some of the reply to proof. You see, when you want to prove something at times, you prove foolishness. If I didn't talk now. Okay, talk. You talk now and you got stalked. Or God's give to test his lap. Give you another one. Beat you now. It's a pack out now. Do you know most of the crisis in the homes is not caused by the devil? We only allow him. The devil won't trouble your home without your permission. That's the truth. Directly or indirectly. As your husband, wisdom tells you when, when there are things you even pretend you didn't see in the home. But that's wisdom. That you won't even talk. You won't talk at all. Wisdom will tell you, we teach you how to. You know your wife. You know when to talk. You know when to correct her. You know when not to correct her. Peace. How can a man be set over this Commission worldwide, and yet the man said, I have not had one sleepless night over what 
But some of us, just one shop at NRA Junction, you can't sleep. One, you are the employer, you are the employee. But the whole thing is just 250,530 naira. And you can't sleep. Can I pray for you again? May God impact you with this wisdom. And any troubled area of your life, I see the wisdom of God, which is Jesus himself, because the Bible says Jesus is the wisdom of God, is stepping into that challenge. Whether at home or in the place of work, is stepping in this month, and peace is restored in the name of Jesus. Right? Come and I say peace is restored in the name of Jesus. Right? God is settling someone right now. That trouble between you and your parents, God is settling right now in the name of Jesus. Right? I said the wisdom of God is settling in now in the name of Jesus. Right? Wisdom will tell you or teach you when to say I'm sorry. Even as a man, if need be. Because he said this wisdom, there is no arrogance in this wisdom. No. It's peaceable. It's humble. It's gentle. If I'm sorry, it's what will bring peace in my home. Why not say it? It's not written on the face. Someone shout hallelujah. I know you are quiet now because the thing is choking you. But I pray, the last trouble you saw in your marital home shall be the last in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your louder amen. I said, let me hear your louder amen. And um, number three, wisdom generates strange order of exploit. Mark 6 verse 2. Mark 6 verse 2. It generates strange order of exploit. And when the Sabbath day was come, and they began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence are this man, this wisdom? Next verse. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? That will soon be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Right? When they see your business, this shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Right? In your career. This shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. If that is to let your amen catch you right now. How do I say this order of wisdom? Number one, in the first half we said you must have a genuine heart for God through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and through continuous obedience. In addition, is through the studying and meditating of the word of God. First Timothy 4, 13 to 15. Studying. First Timothy 4, 13. Studying and meditating on the word of God. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Study. When you meditate and think over the word of God, it enters you. It forms part of your, of your thought pattern. Put it there. Put it there. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. He said, I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Next verse. Verse 14. Verse 14. Neglect not the gift that's in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the lane of, hand, of the ends of prophecy. Verse 15 now. He said, meditate upon this thing. Meditate. Give thyself only to them. And that thy profiting may appear to her. Thy, thy profiting may appear to her. Number two is by keeping wise company. Who you follow, determine what follows you. Proverbs 13 verse 20. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Keeping wise company. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but the company or companion of fools shall be destroyed. You shall not be destroyed. And number three also, as we mentioned in the first service, is through continuous obedience to God's instruction. Through continuous obedience to God's instruction. One of the vital instructions on in this commission now is Operation Come and See. How are you engaging? Most of us have never been involved. You feel unconcerned. You don't come for prayer. Even if you are busy, you don't create time to pray 
and um, engage in your own outreach. Well, it's not late. Two more weeks. Make up your mind to engage. Obedience. 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 So everyone should therefore step up or dive in if you have not. Step up is our engagement within the next two weeks. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. In praying for the kingdom and in reaching out to the laws for their salvation and offering compelling invitation. That is a repeated invitation to all your contacts to come to this church for their salvation and their desire breakthrough. Matthew 6 verse 6. He said, your father that said in secret will reward you in the open. John 15 16. I will then you, I will ask you to go. Then go. Bring fruit and let your fruit abide. Luke 14 23. He said, go to the highway, the edges. Compare them. Compare them to come. Compelling invitation. And by God's grace, as the Lord lives, come the, Ju the 16th of June this month, Operation Come and See shall be fully delivered. Yeah. Let me hear your louder amen. Yeah. To the glory of God and everyone's reward for as many that are already engaging and those that we can, our reward shall be delivered openly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come and I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, before we rise to pray, vengeance. That is the second aspect of today's service. Vengeance. What is vengeance? Vengeance is God inflicting punishment on your enemies. Psalm 149, verse 7. God inflicting punishment Psalm 149, verse 7. He said, To execute vengeance upon the hidden. The hidden talks about the enemies. And punishment. Someone say punishment. Upon the people. That means it doesn't matter how many they are, they can't escape the punishment. Can I use that scripture to pray for you one minute? Come on, can I pray for you? I pray for you in the name of Jesus by the validity of this world. By today's encounter, any group of people gathering for your sake, they will be responsible for your predicaments. They will not escape the punishment of God today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. God will deal with them. God will punish them. God will afflict them. In the name of Jesus Christ. God inflicted punishment on the enemies. It means God showing your enemy is other side. Is what? Are you following? Is what? Other side. God has one side. They call the other side. First Samuel 2 verse 6. Samuel, first Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6. Can we read? Everybody want to go. The law. Don't, don't say it like a civilian. Say it like a soldier. Violently. Say it again. The law kill it. And did what? Make it alive. It's okay. Those are the two sides. The side we always see is the side of making alive. The side of mercy. Johnny mercy. Provision. Healing the sick. Saving souls. That's the common side we see every day. But there is the other side that may not be seen every day. But always seen in a day like this. And that is the other side. The other side of vengeance. The other side of his anger. The other side of no mercy. That is the other side God is showing to your enemy today. Yeah. Listen to me. If God refused to show your enemy the other side, even you, you can't get to the other side. That means you can't live where you are. There is, there is the other side to every challenge that you are passing through. If you are in poverty, there is the other side of prosperity. If you are barren now, there is the other side of fruitfulness. If you are jobless, there is the other side of miracle jobs. If you are maritally plagued, there is the other side of marital breakthrough. Listen to me, there is the other side. I say there is the other side. Let me hear you. I say there is the other side. In Mark chapter 4, God, told, Jesus told the disciple, he said, let us cross over to the other side. 
there is the other side. The enemy has kept you enough on this other side. It is time to move to the other side. Say with me, it is time. Now so that they talk, come. Say with Father, it is time for me to move to the other side. Listen to me, it doesn't matter how good this side is. There is always a better side. There is always a better side. Until God shows your enemy the other side of vengeance. He may keep you on this other side. Frustrated. But listen to me. That manipulation expired today. Until God showed Pharaoh his other side. The Israel couldn't move to the other side of Canaan. To the other side of the Red Sea. They couldn't move. They couldn't move. Can I pray for you? Come on. Can I pray for you? you, you your faith is not, it's not, it's not flowing. Can I pray for you? Any power that has kept you on this other side. He said you have, you have stayed in law enough. This is not your rest. He said advance. By the encounter of this service, any power that has decided to keep you on a spot, God of my father, God of your father, Bishop Ideko, is showing them the other side of vengeance in the name of Joseph. They said, over their dead body, will you cross over to be married? Over their dead body, will you cross over to have your good kind of job that you desire? They say, over, over my dead body, will you cross over to have your own child? The Bible says, who is it that yet and come to pass when God has not commanded it? <laughs> I pray today in the name of Jesus, whether in your father's family, whether in your mother's family, anywhere they are, that they are vowed to keep you on this side. Today, vengeance answer in their camp in the name of Jesus. And I decree that the mighty hand of God brings you now from that side to the other side. Enter the other side. I say enter. I say enter. I say enter. In the name of Jesus. Sir. There is the hand of God that can bring you from the other side to this other side. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 3, Verse 3, sit down. Habakkuk 3, verse 3. Let's quickly read. The Bible says, God came from Tema and the only one from Mount Paran Sela. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Verse 4. And his brightness was, at the, was as the light. He had horns coming out of where? Come on, if you want to sit down and mention it. Come on, coming out of where? His hand. He said, and there was the hiding of his power. I know there are powers responsible for where you are. I know there are demonic powers. Powers of witches and witchcrafts. Powers of household enemies. Generational plague. Generational curse. I know those powers exist. But there is a power that is above all those powers. That power is in his hand. And when that hand is straight forth to your direction, it, it, it deals with the enemies, with the same hand, and use the same hand to bring you out. Someone is under the sound of my voice today. You are coming out in the name of Jesus. Sir. I say you are coming out, you are coming out. Not tomorrow, not next week. You are coming out today. Say with me, I'm coming out. Let that let, say it with, with, with only anger. I am coming out. I am coming out. Coming out without negotiation. The, uh, Pharaoh said, uh, you see, you see, uh, you can go, but don't go with your children. You can go, but don't go far. What, what nonsense? What nonsense? No negotiation. God is talking and the devil is talking. A president is talking and look at God's men chairman, they put him out. Into the put him out. From where to where? 
from where to where i say you are coming out i don't know who i'm talking to but there is someone in this service your season to come out as a right i say come out in the name of jesus from family play come out from hereditary you come out from generational cause come out from poverty come out from breakdown come out from limitation come out now coming out that is what happens when vengeance takes place vengeance does not leave you at the same place please sit down no vengeance is not god just the plain no 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 the vengeance of god is for a purpose is directed for a mission so when you say vengeance it's not just vengeance and eh? what next no it's vengeance to bring you out to bring you out i said to bring you out i said to bring you out say it again i'm coming out in fact you are no more coming out i have come out come on say i've come out see yourself with the eyes of the spirit I have, I have come out. I have come out. I have come out. Abba. I have come out. Oh. I have come out. I have come out. I have. I have. Whatever has made you to attend this service has, has, has programmed you to come out. I have come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to me. Vengeance is not a sin. Because vengeance belongs to God. Our God is a God of vengeance. Psalm 94 verse 1. God to God. Who vengeance belong to? Do what? Show yourself. Manifest yourself. Prove yourself. Until God prove himself, you, you might not be approved. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Until vengeance shows up, the enemy might not shut up. Until vengeance shows up, until God shows up with vengeance, the enemy might not shut up. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 8, or 8, 11, sorry. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11. The Bible says, because the sentence against evil work is not executed speedily. therefore the heart of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil they said no, God will not do anything God will not do anything but today God will do something I said today God will do something in the name of Jesus Christ come and I say in the name of Jesus Christ until vengeance comes no comfort God has programmed comfort for you yes but life will not give you what you deserve. Life will give you what you demand. Yeah, you are entitled to comfort. But why are you not seeing the comfort? Because there are forces. Paul says, a, 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 a great and effectual door will be opened unto me. But there are many, there are many. Left and right. Father, our, father side, mother side, in law side, friend side, church side, everywhere side. Too many. <laughs> Too many. But when vengeance strikes, you enter into your comfort. Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2. Until vengeance is invoked, your beauty and your glory does not come out. It will not be revealed. That's what made people to labor without results. It is absence of vengeance that provoke fruitless labor. Enemies, we allow many to walk. In Judges chapter 6 and chapter 7, we saw the Midianites. They will allow the Israelites to walk. They won't trouble them. There are people, they will allow them to walk, 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 gather money. He said, no, this June, I must lay my foundation. They have given quotation, 250,000. He said, no problem. January, at least, if I say 50,000 50, at the end of May, this June, I must lay. They won't stop you. Be gathering it, be gathering it. 29 and a half days of May. That's midnight. Or before midnight. It remained May 30 or 31st or first enter. Just got a call. They said, Mama, don't see cool. Mama, see cool. And you are the first one. You are the only one working in the family. The rest are students. Mama, see cool. 
Come, oh, come, oh. if you know one member my mother die, you go there. Doctor said, buy this. Fell for draw 50,000. Then after that, 100,000. My mama no go die. Oh. Mama no go die. I think you go watch your mama may die. Mama no go die. Oh. The devil won't stop until the account sold 1,000 balance. The devil will say, okay, mama, where now? Mama go say, my body don't wear low. <laughs> that devil is a liar. I said, that devil is a liar. Anyone waiting for you to labor. Only for him to eat the fruit of your labor. I decree vengeance today in the name of Jesus Christ. So we must invoke vengeance. Because we are in the last days. The days of vengeance. Not the days of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of pity. No. <laughs> there are prayer and there are prayers. There are times you pray prayer of mercy. But there are times you pray prayer of vengeance. Oh God, keep them. Listen to me. There are times you pray prayer of let them live to see what I will become. That one is another case. They, you may not live to become it all. If you didn't keep them. Oh God, leave them, leave them, leave them, let them see what I will become. See what he, see what he. The mama is 85, he refused to die. Using your glory to, 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 to renew his her blood. Abba, waiting for what? To see, waiting, waiting once again. He must die. I say he must die. She must die. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shortly we'll be rising up. And I want the only anger to provoke inside you. Because your mouth is your weapon of provoking vengeance. Your mouth, your mouth. Your mouth. A close mouth is a close destiny. Psalm 149 verse 6. Psalm 149 verse 6. I'd like for us to read together. Want to go now. Let the high praises of God. Do what? Be in their mouth. Someone say mouth. Verse 7. To do what? Want to go? To execute. Can I tell you something? God won't show up until you call him to show up. The witches you don't kill, God will leave them. <laughs> God will leave them all. And may witches not repent tomorrow and go to heaven. You know that's the mystery. Witches can kill and still repent. What of the, the people he has killed? That's their cup of tea. To now be like John the Baptist, they said, Give me the head. How they cut the head, I don't know. Will not put the ear cut. For where? Can, now, could you imagine? Sending to bring the head of Elijah. No, imagine it. They have not even touched him. He was on the, on the, on the staircase. He said, what? He said, we should bring you. He said, now, if I'm a man of God, fire pure. He just said, uh, they turned to swear. Straight. And Eli uh, John the Baptist that came in, in the double portion of the anointing of Elijah. They said, bring your head. He said, well, God, forgive them all because they don't know what they are doing. Who told you they don't know? Who told you they don't know? They know. If they don't know, how did they know your name? How did they know how to carry your picture? How did they know to carry your, your, your wares and carry it to Babalawo? They enter Keke and travel to the village. You say they don't know. You better tell them, prove to them that they know. If they don't know, tell them that they know by invoking vengeance. Shortly you will rise up. Are you going to say now? I say shortly, shortly. Sit down first. Who told you they don't know? Hear this. Finally, Jesus prayed that prayer because to die was his destiny. Are you aware? He came to die for us. So when they were want to kill him, he was praying. They don't know that they are helping me to fulfill my destiny. Oh God, forgive them all because they don't know what they are doing. But you, did you come to die? You are not Jesus. You are not Jesus. No. They know what they are doing. If they don't know by vengeance, they will know. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Before we rise to pray, you're under the sound of my voice. You are not born again. Just two minutes to do this. We want to, we want to, we want to make them to know. They must know. <laughs> they must know. <laughs> they must know. But there is no way they can know if you are not known by God. If you are not known by God, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? Who are you? So, you, you, you know you are here, you are not born again, or you, you give your life and you are basically there, you want to return. Just a few, two minutes, we do this before we rise to pray. Come right now. Come, 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 come. Pick up your Bible, your bag, and run to the altar. That's the only way. Acquaint yourself with God. Be at peace first. Then good shall come unto you. Then good shall come unto you.
turn to him, then he will turn to you to take vengeance on your behalf. They are coming right now. They are coming. They are brother. You are sitting down. The devil is telling you not to go. And you too, you are sitting down. You better come now. Today is the day of deliverance for you. That sister over there, God is touching your heart now. You are ashamed. Better come now. Come. Come. Come in the name of Jesus. Come. Come. Church. Clap for them. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They are coming. Some are sitting down there. They are sitting down there. I can feel it. They are sitting down there. Come now. Come. Come in the name of Jesus. The devil that wants to keep you where you are. Not to move to the other side. I call that devil now. Come. Come out in the name of Jesus. Right? Come and give your life to Jesus. And your life will not remain the same again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 They are coming. They are coming. That devil will... No way, no way, no way. No way. Come, 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 come. You are sitting there. Come. You said they know you. Don't, don't be careful who knows you. Let God know you. Let God know you. Come. Come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Those of us in front and those coming, place your right hand on your chest. Your right hand on your chest. Your right hand. And lift the left one up. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I've had your word. I return to you today. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me by your blood. Grant me grace to follow you forever. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am now a born again child of God. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, let your grace answer for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep them forever with you in Jesus' mighty name. I said in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. But one minute, 19 and 20. Jeremiah 23, 19 and 20. Let's read together, everybody. One to go. Behold, a white wind of a law is gone forth with what? That is anger. Like I said in the first service, now God is angry. God is what? Angry. Not with you, with your enemy. Because God is not happy with the situation you find yourself. God is not happy. So God is angry. Put it back, verse 19. Now let's, let's read again. Behold, wine wind of the Lord is gone forth with fury. Even a grievous white wind. What shall he do? He shall fall grievously upon the edge of the wicked. Verse 20. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thought of his heart. In the latter days, he shall come. You know what that means? The prayer you are praying today will not expire today. Oh. It will keep on working and working and working until all your enemies are silenced. Pray this prayer and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your white wing, the white wing of your anger, fall grievously upon my enemies today. Pray that prayer. Pray it. Pray it. Yakota. Barusha. Baregedegero. Let it fall upon them. Let your anger not return until he executes sentence of death, of affliction upon them. Upon them. Lakatose, Barukata, Zerusha, Takate, Kete, Kete. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Will you pray one more prayer? The Bible says when a strong man, a powerful man, keep at his house, no, no trouble. But as soon as a stronger than he appears, there's a problem. And that's what we have right now. We say the hand of God is the hand of power. You will pray, oh God, by your hand of power, Bring me out of the limitation of my life. Bring me out of... Mention your own case. Mention your own case. Bring me out of barrenness. Bring me out of breakdown. Bring me out of family plague. Generational cause. 
Bring me out of slow motion in life. Pray your own, pray your own, pray it. Let your arm bring me out to the other side. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Your amen will show whether you believe or not. I said that amen will show whether you believe or not. Anyone under the plague of spirit of bands, by the vengeance of today, I decree eternal divorce now. Whatever is connecting that evil man with you. Some of you, you have done wedding in the spirits. You, have, you see yourself wearing gown, married, and what they call it, wedding gown with a ring. Those are the things connecting with you. But today, whatever is connecting him with you, in form of ring or anything, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Every spirit children breastfeeding in a dream, depriving your children from arriving in the physical. I kill those children now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of Holy Ghost destroy those children now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of backwardness. See yourself in the village wearing secondary school uniform where you left 30 years ago. That is the spirit of backwardness by the vengeance of Holy Ghost. That spirit is caught now in the name of Jesus. Sir. Every spirit that makes you to, to begin to sell in the dream, you are selling, collecting money in the dream. Today, that is targeted to affect your finances and your business. The vengeance of God. Answer now in the name of Jesus. Christ. In one of the services like this, one time, a word of wisdom came that there is someone here who just prayed. You gave somebody gifts, and the person used the money you dash him to work against your finances. We just prayed that prayer. And after service, one of our members said, Sir, I'm the one. And the person is not a far person. He's my brother. His work is not going. He's doing well doing something or so. And I gave him some money to assist him. I noticed from that time, my finances has not been working again. But after that prayer, the thing was reversed. Maybe you are in that kind of situation. Somebody used your kindness to work against you. Vengeance. Answer now in the name of Jesus. Sir. Another one that looks like it is that they bought something from you thinking that they are just buying for normal buying but it's to have access to what you are selling and they bought it and took it to the evil shrine and since that day nobody is saying hello manipulate your business one of our members came one day and um, she was just crying after coming out cry, cry, what happened she was crying that even me I didn't even know what to say again he just explained, just pray. And go. I noticed after two or three days, she came again. But this time she was laughing. And I said, you know, my hope took my life. I said, something, something has happened. What was the situation? Do you know that what she's selling, people are going to the one, two, three shop and buying. And they will come back and say, ah, you didn't open this money. You didn't open this money. They say, I open now. I open. But in the spirit time, they close. Or they turn what she's selling to another thing. That may be your own case too. But whatever be your case, maybe they have carried your certificate into the evil coven. Whatever is your case, there are people they have used padlock to lock their destiny. There are people they have used an image to represent you. 
Whatever is your own case today, vengeance answer in the name of Jesus Christ. I say vengeance answer now in the name of Jesus. And let me pray one, one more prayer. For those believing God for the fruit of the womb, every negative medical report is reversed now in the name of Jesus. Christ. The Bible says none of them bury the whole pier twins. There shall be double for your trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have come out. I say you have come out. By the anointing of liberation upon this altar, I stand on behalf of God's servant, the state pastor. I decree that you will never return there again for life. In the name of Jesus Christ, every financial struggle expire today. Every borrowing and begging before you can eat expire today in the name of Jesus Christ. That your project has been stagnated. To from today, let it pick up again supernaturally. So shall it be. That promotion is released. Anyone sitting on your promotion, like Amman was sitting on the promotion of Modeka, I unseat them today in the name of Jesus. I say I unseat them in the name of Jesus. You will enjoy favor from today. So shall it be. Did you believe it? Did you believe it? Shout the ladder of Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Will you will you give God a, a victory a victory shout? Victory shout. Is that the much you can shout? If I were you, I will jump. I will scream. Glory to God. Side is the silent side. The victorious side is always a shouting side. Which side are you? Which side are you? Which side are you? I am on the winning side. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Make it loud. Glory to God. God's summer is not with us this morning because it's an official assignment, you know, out of um, the town. And we should be back with us. His joining is the clear safe in Jesus' mighty name. This first week of June shall open you to next level. Everything that you are entitled to the first half of the year that you have not touched January to May, this month of June, heaven will deliver it to you. Go in peace. You're going out and coming throughout this month and this week is blessed in the name of Jesus. Your journey is blessed. You are returning with your testimony. This blessing you have received today is sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. To God be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. You believe shout the best of Amen. Amen. Together, let's receive the goodness. Surely. I have dominion. And I take dominion. With a smile on your face, congratulate your neighbor to your right, to your left. Congratulations.